Tyler, thanks for, uh, for joining us. It's the first time we've spoken to you since you joined us at the pitch side desk there at Ellen Road. I know it was a tough day. You couldn't, you couldn't play that day. And we were all incredibly impressed by uh, your smoothness in front of the camera. So we, we we're all letting you know you can, you can join us anytime you want. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we'll start with the obvious. It's never easy when, when a manager gets sacked. I've been a part of clubs where at, so, at certain times you can't wait for the manager to leave, and there's other times where you're so connected to the manager that it's really difficult. Uh, Jesse Morris is someone who brought you into the football club. On the way out, were you able to talk to him? Have you been able to wish him well um, as, he was, as he was leaving? 100%. Um, yeah, like you said, it's, it's never easy. You know, I've been part of... Uh, a few managerial changes so far in my in my short career, and it never gets easy. Uh, whether you like them or, or not, you know it's it's tough to see them go because whether they bring success or not to the club, you know that they rely on this for for their job and, and their living, and they probably mm -hmm. care about it. Um, for me, Jesse gave me so many opportunities uh, in the start of my professional career. At 15 or 16, I looked across from him and said, "Listen, my goal is one day to play in Europe," and he connected with me on a personal level and said, this is where you start and this is how we get here. And now it's time to, to put the work in. So um, I'm very thankful for on so many levels for, you know, what he gave me. And yeah, I immediately, you know, called him and, and texted him as, as soon as the, the news was announced. And yeah, listen, you know, he, he takes it on the chin. He, he understands the, the circumstances. Um, but as an ultra competitive guy that, that he is, he's, he's eager for another opportunity probably to, to get out there and be able to prove himself again. So what he's done in his career so far speaks for itself. You know, as an American coach, not so many have made it across the pond and, and had success. And, you know, for him, he, he's had success and he can say that to himself. So, um, yeah, super proud of him and obviously everything that he's done. But again, that's that's part of football. Yeah, that's just the business. And no, no doubt he'll land on his feet. And he certainly led you down a, a really good path thus far. Uh, I, I want to talk about another American. One, one leaves and, and one comes in. And, and Weston McKinney. We know that you have a past with him. We've seen the childhood pictures. We saw the video of you at his press conference. What's it been like? He's now coming into your football club. What's it been like, uh, you know, showing him the ropes in the early stages? Yeah, no, it's been really good. Obviously, I, I know the talent that, that Weston has. And, you know, now for him, it's about just coming to the league and being able to execute and finally showcase what he's able to do. You know, coming from a completely different style of play in, in a Juventus side and in a different league, the energy and end-to-end and -end football that, that the Premier League brings is probably more suited to his style. So now it's just about mm -hmm. getting up to speed with, with what he's capable of doing but it's great to have another American in the changing room it's great to see that these clubs have trust in, in the American process now and are start, starting to finally recognize that um, not only do we have talent but we have a little bit more and we can take teams to a, to another level you know at the point we were at in our season to bring a player like Weston in shows that uh, the club has ambitions so uh, for me it's great to, to look on the pitch and, and have another American that I'm familiar with and have good chemistry with well yeah, yeah and, and you talk about that familiarity I, I mean the two of you combine so well on the pitch, both for club and country. What, what's, what's that secret sauce? Talk us through, through what that's like on a, on a match day for the two of you because there is such a synergy there. Yeah, we're, we're probably uh, polar opposites personalities in, in, a, in a sense. You know, he's probably um, a little bit more outgoing. Uh, he's just a quirky kid. He's always bubbly, always positive no matter what. And he has this type of arrogance, confidence to, to him that, you know, oozes out to, to everyone, which is super important. And I'm probably a little bit um, more laid back, a little bit more to myself, lead by example type of guy, get on you when I when I need to. But we're, we're both super confident and super competitive. But on the pitch, to be honest with you, I, whenever I pick my head up, I know where he is. I know uh, he knows where I am. We, we just get each other out of situations when we need to. Um, but yeah, it's good to look to your left and to your right and know that you, you have somebody that is just going to battle with you and go to war with you no matter what. So, you know, when I put a tackle in and I get in a, in a tussle, I know he's right there to, to back me up and vice versa. So, um, yeah, we go a long ways back, but it's a good friendship and good relationship on the field. Well, you guys balance each other brilliantly. And, yes, there is a, there's definitely a, a spark in the fire, which is always a pleasure to see. Um, Javi Gracia, he's come in as, as the new manager. Again, not an easy situation. What's that been like from, from his aspect? When, when you come in as a new manager, you have to get – you can't change the whole process. You have to get a few different points across. This Leeds team was set up in a certain way to play over the last couple of years. What's he brought in in terms of new ideas, fresh ideas, changes? He's been, he's been amazing. And to be honest with you, um, 
has probably surprised me a bit. When a manager comes in in a situation uh, that we were in, you can't really expect too much from them. You don't know how they're going to handle the situation. Are they going to lean more towards the route of making great relationships with the players and motivating you, or are they going to focus more on the tactics? And he's just found a perfect balance of, of everything. He came in, got to know us a little bit, but without cramming too much information into one thing, he's taken the things that he felt we need to improve in, in the training sessions in the two days before Southampton. Um, we did a we did a lot of work. It, it wasn't easy training sessions, as you would you know believe with the two days before a game or one day before a game. We did what we needed to do, and, and on the field we felt uh, a lot more organized, a lot more disciplined, um, a good balance with the ball, without the ball. Um, you know we've been so good against the ball. Leeds has been notorious for that in the past you know three years that they've been in the Premier League. But um, now his his orientation is more how can we improve with the ball, save our energy so that when we're losing the ball we still have that energy, but we're able to break teams down more efficiently. And um, you know he's come in, he's given us solutions of, of what to do with the ball. And now it's about being brave and taking those risks when we're out there on the field and seeing how we can uh, develop. Well, uh, time is of the essence when. Uh when you're a new manager and there's never, ever, never enough time. So I can, I can appreciate all those, those hours on the training ground. And, and we see it in the performances. I'm going to switch gears a little bit, go away from Leeds, talk about the U.S. men's national team. You gained a lot of praise for the way you handled yourself yeah, as a captain in a couple of different press conferences at the World Cup. Are you okay to be representing the U.S. meanwhile there's so much discrimination happening against black people in America? You know, there's discrimination uh, everywhere you go. Um, you know, one thing that I've learned, especially from living abroad in the past years and uh, having to fit in in different cultures and, and kind of assimilate into different cultures, um, is that in the U.S. we're, we're continuing to make progress uh, every single day. Are you able to prepare for that? And how do you prepare for those type of situations? Um, no, uh, definitely, definitely not able to prepare for it too much, you know. Uh, Michael Cameron, who's, who's amazing, obviously you know him so well, um, the head of comms in, in the U.S. national team system. Um, yeah, he, he told me before we went in, listen, these are some of the bullet points of, of what's going to be asked. We know it's going to be more political than about football, um, sure. but that's kind of what the whole World Cup has, has been about. And I said, yeah, listen, I'm prepared for it. I was probably a little bit too confident, right? And um, <laughs> when I walked into that press conference room, it was the most hostile environment I've ever been in, and that includes being on the pitch. Um, mm. And you just knew right away that it was going to be more more political than than uh, about football. So when I got asked, you know, the questions that I got asked, obviously you've seen them. I, I've I had to answer them. It wasn't easy, but I just had to to be thoughtful in in how I was responding to the question. It's a learning process for for myself. Obviously, it was my first experience going to that many press conferences, having to deal with things that you know weren't so much about football. But yeah, I tried to handle myself the best that I could and be able to represent our team in the right way because we all share, share similar beliefs. We all support each other. Um, and I felt supported by U.S. soccer in that situation as well. Well, again, well done. Uh, I, was, uh, I was a proud American that day, certainly listening to you and, and watching you as, as so many of us, uh, of us were. When you look back, you know, I talked at Ellen Road a little bit, but I I'd love to hear your thoughts again. When you look back on the World Cup and you're able to be a few months removed from it now, does it still feel... Uh, as good as it did in terms of the success and the building blocks that you were able to put in. Uh, the performances were obviously very good, individual performances were, but collectively, do you still feel really good about the World Cup? I feel that we we definitely took a step in the, in the right direction. Um, I would say that it was one of the first times we showed that we can be dominant against uh, high caliber opponents. Um, but for me, it just leaves me with this feeling and, and hungriness to um, improve and that we can do more. Like we just need to find a way again to, it's almost like I, I make the analogy to Leeds where you just need to get over that hump. It's like, we're there, we're competing, but how do we, play these teams off the field now? What step do we need to take um, in order to do that? Because the talent is there, the camaraderie is there, the system and the setup was was outstanding. Uh, U.S. Soccer did everything they could to support us, um, but it just leaves me feeling like we can do we can do more. Yeah, when you talk about more, the next, the, the obvious uh, follow-on to that is the next World Cup is, is here in the States and predominantly on home soil. You don't have to go through the qualification process. When you talk about like the growth and maturity of this team, because clearly it's the youngest team at the World Cup, which, um, again, is brilliant when you look at the performances and, and what can be in four years. Where, where are those particular points of growth, do you think, for this young team? For me, the points of growth are going to be, you know, playing in every game and tournament until the next World Cup. When you look at the best nations around the world, 
their best players. They don't miss tournaments. They don't skip games. They don't um, they don't uh, not have their core group together in the biggest moments leading up to those games. And I think where I would say we probably let ourselves down a bit is I think for me, Christian and Weston in particular, it took us about six months until the World Cup to finally have each other all on the field together and firing on all cylinders. When you look at the Germanys, when you look at the, the Englands, when you look at the Hollands, their best players are, are always playing together and that's why their chemistry is, is so good. They play in the biggest games, the biggest tournaments. They have the experience through other tournaments together um, and that's where I think you're able to take your biggest steps in development. So, um, you know, for us now, it's about, you know, pushing each other to, to be at every camp, to, to enjoy the grind of, of every single moment because, you know, we don't want to take those, those opportunities for granted that's where we can really take the biggest steps wow very well said i think it is important to have your core group together a lot of pressure on your shoulders as a young captain uh but clearly you can you can handle that you've shown that and pressure obviously in the back end of the season but really good luck great speaking to you again Tyler. thank you tim appreciate it Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. For even more Premier League content from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you over there.